When we use the word science, this is something that kind of has two different meanings, depending on the context of what, what the person is saying. Science, this is something that can refer to a body of knowledge, all the knowledge that we have gained through scientific processes, um, or it could be referring to to the process, like the process of doing science. So um, what we're going to do is sort of define those two a little bit separately. So first off, scientific knowledge, what is this? This is knowledge that allows us to describe and predict the natural world, right? Sticking to the natural world again. Um, if we talk about the process of science, or in other words, how is that scientific knowledge generated? That involves a very specific series of steps. And the series of steps is called the scientific method. And you'll need to know these steps. So we're going to take some time and just walk through them here. This is a series of steps, the scientific method. It's a series of steps that helps us to accumulate information that um, is, it, well, like it says on your slide right here, is free of bias as much as possible. So it's sort of like trying to just directly gather information without um, without influencing with interpretation. So we don't want to insert our own interpretation into things. We want to just sort of take things at face value in science. Okay, so the process of doing the scientific method goes something like this. We would start off by making some sort of an observation. And um, so another way to say this is just kind of you notice something about the natural world. It could be something you find kind of interesting. I'm gonna go with the example that our textbook uses. So an observation and a generalization might be something like this. Um, we observe that rats, given a particular drug, tend to have lower blood pressure. Their blood pressure is lower than other rats. If we measure and compare those numbers, rats that received the drug have lower blood pressure. Okay, so that's an initial observation. And um, the generalization that we might say is that uh, this drug, whichever drug we're talking about, this drug tends to lower blood pressure. We might say in mammals, because rats are mammals. Okay, so we might be a little bit specific there. Um, but that's our generalization. This drug tends to lower blood pressure. After that, what we would do is form some type of a hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for something. I mean, we don't actually know if it's true yet because we haven't tested it. It's just kind of an idea that we're gonna, we're gonna put it out there and, and then we'll go on and test it. Okay, so this is a hypothesis. Um, hypothesis. This drug that we were talking about, this drug would be an effective treatment for high blood pressure in humans, okay? Uh, we haven't tested that yet, we're not sure if it's true, but it seems like a logical idea. So that's our hypothesis. <clears throat> Next up, once we have that hypothesis, would be to make a testable prediction. Let's make a prediction. If we run an experiment on humans, what would we predict to happen? Okay, so the prediction could be something like giving 10 milligrams per day of this drug um, to people with high blood pressure will lower their blood pressure within one month. Okay, so notice how specific this is. We're saying how much is gonna be given, giving 10 milligrams per day of this drug, will lower their blood pressure, blood pressure, I'm having trouble saying that today, blood pressure um, within one month. So we're being really specific. We've said how much of the drug and what time span we're looking over. So that's, that's a prediction that is very testable, right? We can run an experiment and see if that prediction comes true or not. So after the prediction, we would go on here and actually run the experiment, do the experiment. And this is just the experiment that's based on your prediction. So actually go and do it is what this part is all about. Once we do the experiment, um, what, we would, what we would come to next is sort of interpreting the results of the experiment. And we might either find that the hypothesis was true, was valid, okay, so we might actually see blood pressure is lowered within a month in the people who received this drug, or we might not. Um, we might get a different result than we expected. And if that's the case, 
What we would do next is modify our hypothesis. This is kind of like a revise and repeat section. Okay, so modify the hypothesis and try it out again, make a new prediction, run a new experiment. So we repeat this uh, over and over as many times as we need to until finally we have a hypothesis that actually played out through the prediction and experiment. So it's an iterative process um, and, and here's another thing I wanted to say, it's one that we actually use a lot. So we just described this in the context of some drug that might be being developed for, for treating blood pressure. Um, but the scientific method, this is something that you really use every day in your day-to-day -day life. Um, you might just not have thought about it in, th in these words, in, th um, in these terms. But um, it's really just saying, let's do things logically so that we can draw conclusions about things. So everyday examples, what would be an everyday example? Um, maybe, you, maybe you want to relax at the end of the day, maybe you want to watch a show on TV. So what would you do? You'd pick up the remote and you'd try to turn the TV on. Let's say the TV doesn't turn on. Okay, so that's your initial observation. Hmm, the remote's not working. Um, so what next? You would make a hypothesis. Maybe the batteries are dead and then you would make a prediction. If I change the batteries, the remote might work to turn the TV on. And then you do the experiment, actually change the batteries, right? And then after, after that, you would check it out. Does the remote work? If so, my hypothesis was right. If not, I better revise and, and try something else. So the scientific method, right, you use it a lot, actually. Um, you probably just haven't thought of it in these terms. So I would encourage you just to practice with these terms. Think about how many times throughout the day do you use the scientific method? And it'll probably come up more than you might have originally expected. Okay. Let's see here, just a couple of details on performing experiments in biology. So most of the time, um, if we were trying to actually test out a drug or some sort of treatment for something, what we would do is have two different groups of people. Okay, so you start with one really big pool of individuals who are gonna participate in the study, and then you'd randomly split them up into two groups, and one group would get the drug treatment, the other group would get not the drug treatment, they would get some generic like sugar pill. It looks like the drug, but it doesn't actually include the drug. So we would talk about a treatment group that receives the drug and a control group, one that receives a placebo. This is really important because this will give us two sets of data at the end that we'll be able to compare against each other. And so in the end, we would be able to compare, are the blood pressures significantly different in these two groups? Um, if yes, if the drug group has lower blood pressure, then that's going to provide support for our hypothesis. If no, if the blood pressure readings are about the same, then that suggests our hypothesis needs to be modified. So those are just some little details about actually performing the experiment. How would that be done?